At this point, you've created and placed the majority of the doors and windows for this building. There are just two more areas where doors and windows need to be inserted with the door and window tools. The front porch entrance and the back porch entrance. You'll start with the front porch area, located here. The design layers Floor 1 and Scan 1 should still be the only visible layers. If you need to make this change in your file, do so now. First, you'll need to configure the first window to be inserted into this wall. To do this, select the Window tool from the Building Shell toolset and click the Preferences button in the toolbar. In the Window Settings, go to the General tab and input 6 feet in the Width field, 8 foot 7 inches in the Height field, and 2 feet 1 inch in the Elevation Wall field. Set the Elevation Reference drop-down menu to Sill of Window. Additionally, set the Sash drop-down menu to Custom, then click the Custom Sash Options button below. In the Custom Sash Options dialog box, set the number of rows to 2 and the number of columns to 1. Currently, the top sash should be highlighted red. If it's not, press the left or right selection arrows in the bottom left until it is highlighted. Once highlighted in the selected sash field, set the width field to 5 feet and 10 and a half inches and the height field to 4 feet 2 inches. Set the operation drop down menu to fixed glass. Press the right arrow to highlight the bottom sash and verify that the operation drop down menu is set to fixed glass. Then click OK twice to return to the drawing area. Now you need to insert the window 7 inches from the left end of the wall. To do this, activate the second mode in the toolbar, Offset Insertion Mode. Also, enable the fourth mode in the toolbar, Align Object Left Mode. Now click on the corner to the left of the opening. Move your cursor to the right and click at any point along the wall. Then move your cursor to the right once more so that the preview flips to the right. Now click again. This will open the Enter Offset dialog box. In the Offset field, input a value of 7 inches, and also choose Insertion Point for the option Offset Using, then click OK. When you return to your drawing area, you'll see the window move 7 inches away by its left edge. Moving on to the next window, you'll need to return to the window settings to configure it, so click the Preferences button in the toolbar. For this window, use a casement sash. Also, set the width field to 36 inches, the height field to 7 feet, and the elevation in wall field to 1 inch. Click OK to return to the drawing area. The second mode, Offset Insertion, should still be enabled but this time the window should be offset 9 inches from the right edge of the window you previously inserted. To do this, click the right edge of the existing window. Move your cursor to the right and click at any point along the wall. Then move your cursor to the right once more so that the preview flips to the right. Now click again. This will open the Enter Offset dialog box. In the Offset field, input a value of 9 inches and also Choose Insertion Point for the option Offset Using, then click OK. When you return to your drawing area, you'll see the window move 9 inches away from the first window. Now it's time to insert some doors. Select the Door tool from the Building Shell toolset and click the Preferences button in the toolbar. In the General tab of the Door settings, the Width field should be set to 3 feet the height field should be set to 7 feet, and the configuration should be simple swing. In the Jam tab, set the width field to 3 quarters of an inch and check the option Use Wall Depth. Next, go to the Leaf tab and choose Glass from the Panel drop-down menu. Then set the Top Rail Width to 4 inches and the LR Style Width to 4 inches. Click OK to return to the drawing area. This door needs to be 3 inches away from the last window you inserted in the wall. So, enable the second mode, Offset Insertion Mode, in the toolbar and click on the right edge of the last window you inserted. Move your cursor to the right and click at any point along the wall. 
Then move your cursor to the right once more so that the preview flips to the right. Now click again. This will open the Enter Offset dialog box. In the Offset field, input a value of 3 inches and also choose Insertion Point for the option Offset Using, then click OK. You'll see the door move 3 inches away from the window. Two more doors with the same parameters must be inserted in this wall. So repeat this process to insert two more doors that are three inches apart to the right of the current door. To the right of these three doors are two more casement windows with the same settings as the one that sits to the left of the three doors in the wall. You can right click this window and choose Create Similar Object to activate the window tool with the exact same parameters as the selected window. Now, make sure you're in the second mode, Offset Insertion mode, and insert two more windows in the wall. One that is three inches from the last door, and one that is three inches from the next window. That's it for the porch entrance. Switch to the right isometric view from the view bar and render in OpenGL to see what the new entrance looks like. If you take a look at the left end of this entrance, you'll notice that this wall currently blocks the view from the far left window. To fix this, you'll need to shape the wall slightly. First, switch to the reshape tool in the basic tool palette. Select the wall you need to reshape and enable the second mode in the toolbar, Add 3D Wall Peaks. Then click the top right vertex point of the wall and move your cursor to the left until you snap to the perpendicular wall. Click once more to add the new vertex point to the wall. Now, enable the first mode in the toolbar, reshape 3D walls, and select the vertex point at the top right corner of the wall. Once the vertex point is selected, press the tab key twice to enter the top field in the floating data bar. Input 48 inches and press enter to lock in the value. Now, click once more to move the vertex point. You need to add another point to this wall. So again, enable Add 3D Wall Peaks in the toolbar and click the vertex point you just moved. Hold the Shift key down and move your cursor to the left until you reach the perpendicular wall. Then click to add the new vertex point. Now, this wall no longer blocks the large window in the wall behind it. If you like, you can take a look at your progress with the flyover tool. Once finished, return to a top plan view so that we can make the back porch entrance. To create the back porch entrance, you'll need to start by inserting a window in this wall. However, instead of offsetting the wall from the wall's edge, you need to offset from the middle of the wall. So let's mark the wall's midpoint. To do this, select the Line tool in the Basic Tool Palette. Snap to the wall's midpoint and click once the cursor cue Midpoint appears. Hold the Shift key, move your cursor to the right, and click once the cursor cue Perpendicular is displayed. It doesn't matter what length the line is as it is just a reference that will be deleted later. Now you can select the Window tool from the Building Shell toolset and click the Preferences button in the toolbar. In the Window Settings dialog box, go to the General tab and choose Casement for the sash if it's not already selected. Also, set the Width field to 3 feet 10 inches, the Height field to 7 inches, and the Elevation in Wall field to 0. Also, choose Sill of Window from the Elevation Reference menu. Next, switch to the Jam and Sash tab. Set the Jam Width 
to three quarters of an inch and check the option Use Wall Depth. Then click OK to return to the drawing area. Make sure Offset Insertion Mode is enabled in the toolbar and click the midpoint of the wall you marked earlier with the Line tool. Move your cursor to the right and click at any point along the wall. Then move your cursor to the right once more so that the preview flips to the right. Now click again. This will open the Enter Offset dialog box. In the Offset field, input a value of 2 inches and also choose Insertion Point for the option Offset Using, then click OK. When you return to your drawing area, you'll see the window move 2 inches away from the midpoint. Now you need to insert two more windows with the same settings into this wall. Last time, you used the Offset Insertion mode twice. This time, we'll use the Move by Points tool once. Select the Move by Points tool from the Basic Tool Palette and enable Move mode and Object Retention mode in the toolbar. Additionally, set the Number of Duplicates field to 2. Next, with the previously inserted window selected, click the left edge of the window. Then, press the Tab key to enter the Length field in the floating data bar. Input a value of 4 feet 2 inches and press Enter to lock in that value. When the cursor queue parallel length is displayed, click once more to create the duplicate windows. Now you have half of the windows inserted. The windows on the other half of the wall are exactly the same, so you can use the mirror tool to duplicate windows. First, hold the shift key and select all three windows in the wall. Then, activate the mirror tool in the basic tool palette and make sure duplicate mode is enabled in the toolbar. Now click the endpoints of the line that is perpendicular to the wall. This will create the mirror axis line, and you'll see three additional windows created on the other half of the wall. Use the flyover tool in the basic tool palette to take a look at this wall in 3D. Right now, there's just one row of windows on the bottom. Next, you'll create the top row of windows, which will be sloped to match the wall. To begin, select the leftmost window. In the Object Info Palette, change the Elevation field to 7 feet 4 inches. The Height field to 10 feet 4 inches. The Top Shape menu to Sloped. And the Rise field to 1 foot 8 and 3 eighths of an inch. To create the rest of the sloped windows in this row, select the previously created and sloped window and go to Edit, Duplicate Array. In the Duplicate Array dialog box, set Number of Duplicates to 5 and Offset Between Duplicates to 4 feet 2 inches. Also, click the Direction button until the arrow in the preview points to the bottom left. Then click OK to create the rest of the windows for the top row. As you can see, all of the duplicates are currently too tall for the wall. To resolve this, you'll need to change the height of each window separately. The height of the second window in the row should be changed in the Object Info Palette to 8 feet 6 inches. The third window should be 6 feet 8 inches. The fourth should be 4 foot 10 inches. and the fifth should be three feet. The last window should be one foot three inches. There's one last open portion in this wall for a door, since it's the entrance from the back porch area. To place the door, first go to the door tool, enable the first mode, and click the preferences button in the toolbar. When the Door Settings dialog box opens, it should have the same parameters as the door used for the front porch. Therefore, you should only need to change a few settings. Go to the Leaf tab and change the bottom rail width to 6 inches. If this value is not already set, 
then click OK to return to the drawing area. Switch to a top plan view from the view bar or by pressing the zero key on your number pad. And also, switch back to Align Object Origin Mode. And click at the midpoint of the rightmost window. Move your cursor until the door leaf is below the wall and to the right. Click once more to create the door. After the door is placed in the wall, drag the door by its left edge and snap it to the left edge of the same window. Now both entrances are complete. Take a look in OpenGL with the flyover tool before you move forward. When you're ready, return to a top plan view.